friends, welcome to Creative DIY Purpose. Today, we're gonna be repurposing some discarded items and transforming them using rice paper. I have a lot to share with you, so come on, let's get started. The first project today is using a piece of scrap wood that I cut out five and a half by five and a half inches. I found this graphic over at thegraphicsfairy.com. I'm applying Mod Podge pretty, pretty generously. Some of the benefits to using rice paper versus tissue paper, you do not need to spray it with a sealer when using an inkjet printer. And as long as you allow your ink to dry for a little bit after printing it, the colors shouldn't run on you when you go to apply the top coat of Mod Podge. It is also a lot thicker than tissue paper, so it doesn't tear or rip as easily. You also have a couple seconds to reposition it. I'm using a piece of corrugated cardboard to smooth out any bubbles or wrinkles. There is a textured side, which is the side that I print on, and that helps for the ink to also absorb quicker than printing on the smooth side, which I've accidentally done a few times. I think I actually did it in this group of projects, and it was fine. If it does smear because you didn't let it dry, you usually can just go back with a clear cloth, swipe it back. Another uh, benefit to the rice paper is look at the vivid colors. And my HP printer is very old and it's just a basic model. I did link a similar one below and that would actually be the one that I would replace if I had to purchase another. I'm using a hair dryer because I really wanted to get on to the next step quickly. It dried nice and even. It didn't bubble. I love the rice paper because you can really get a smooth appearance if that's what you want. Sometimes in projects, I like the wrinkles, but it's nice to know that if you don't want them, that this works really well. I'm applying some watered down Waverly antique wax. I'm going to take a cloth and wipe it back. There was a spot on the top that had some Mod Podge that I did not wipe off. And when I went to apply the wax, it left it a white mark. I, it was very noticeable. I did take a cloth and tried to scrub it off. That did not work. Can you see it up there? So I took it out and ran over the top of it a few times with my sander. Came back applied the wax, it still, <laughs> it was still there. I repeated that process two more times. I, I believe that the top of the roof is not such a even peak as it was at one time, but I got that white spot gone. You could turn this into a decorative birdhouse and I'll be showing one in this video. For the second project, I picked this little candlestick holder up for 99 cents at the thrift store. The floral design on it is raised, but I think I can work with that without removing it or covering it. I'm applying two coats of the DIY paint in vintage linen. I'm going to put that aside, let it dry, and take this jar lid and apply two coats of the same paint. While that was drying, I took the pickle jar and Mod Podged on this image of the gross beak that I got from thegraphicsfairy.com and printed it out. I cut out some of the rice paper and glued it on to the top of the jar lid. I take some of the Waverly antique wax watered down for that wooden knob that I use E6000 to put on the jar lid. I'm going to cover the image with Mod Podge, trying not to get it on the glass. Next step is to cover the candlestick base with some clear wax from DIY. Another option would have been to add a little bit of baking soda in with the paint to cover up that raised image, but I'm gonna work with that. I take some of the watered down antique wax, just putting it on a little section at a time. I then take some fine grit sandpaper 
and just lightly trying to get some of that design to just show a little bit more. So for our second little house, it's the same measurements, five and a half inches by five and a half inches. We're gonna turn this piece of scrap wood into an indoor decorative birdhouse. You could make one and just decorate it as a little home. Once that was dry, I printed out on rice paper and Mod Podged it on, just like I did on the first birdhouse. Came out super smooth. I went around the edges with that fine grit sandpaper and that's how I got off the excess paper. I had this piece of wood that was already cut so I went with the watered down antique wax and applied some onto the golf tee as well. I picked up this one inch drill bit from Lowe's and these are great because you can either put a hole all the way through a piece of wood or just slightly which is what we're going to do today to give it the appearance of a real birdhouse. If you do not want to drill a hole, you could paint a little um, hole on there for the birds or even draw one on. I'm just measuring to try to find the center point. I was not going to originally turn this into a birdhouse. I was just going to put the Amazing Grace on there and just leave it as is. But I wanted to show you a different option from the first house. But I would recommend drilling the hole first and then applying the rice paper like I did with the birdhouse a few videos back, which I will link below in case you haven't seen that. I apply E6000 to the bottom and the base, a little dab of E6000 to hold in the perch, hot glue in some Spanish moss, and now my attempt at making a roof. So I ordered these off from Amazon and they are paint sticks or they're supposed to be paint sticks. They're extremely thin and they're warped. They're so thin I cut them with a pair of scissors to shape this roof. I applied some of the antique wax and they're actually the perfect width. While it was upside down drying into place, I did take some of the watered down antique wax and just went around any part of the wood that was showing. For our next project, we're going to do one of my favorites, and that is transforming a glass bottle. I wipe the bottle down with rubbing alcohol first, applied two coats of the DIY paint, and printed out images that I found on Graphics Ferry onto rice paper. Here I am just trying to see what size is going to best fit. Don't worry, the other one will not go to waste because I have another project in mind for that. If you're in a hurry, you can always use a blow dryer or a heat gun to dry the paint. And after the paint is dry, it's really, it's not even a five minute process. If you do not want to paint a coat of Mod Podge on the top, you can seal it with a spray sealer or polyacrylic. I do opt to brush on polyacrylic. That way it can be used as a base. And if water drips on the outside, then your image is protected. It's also nice to be able to wipe off the bottle with a damp cloth. Here I am just smoothing out all the bubbles going around the outside with a clean cloth. I do use some fine grit sandpaper just to bring out some of the details in this bottle. It's just what I prefer, but you don't have to do that. You could even cover it with white wax or dark wax or antique wax just to give it a different look. I used a blow dryer to make sure that the image was all dried onto the bottle. Now I am using a coat of Mod Podge. I'm going to dry that. And once it sits overnight, I'll put polyacrylic on the next day all over the entire bottle. The 
The next two items that I repurposed, I just want to share with you how they turned out. This empty jar I painted white and then put the rice paper all around the entire jar. I added some vintage lace around the jar with some E6000. I adhered some of the rice paper to the top of the jar lid and used E6000 to put a little wooden knob on the top of the lid. This next birdhouse was made out of an oatmeal container. I applied glitter paint to one of the wood knobs that I used a couple of my previous videos. I did drill a hole, but if you wanted to use it as a storage container, you can skip that step. For the perch, I used a little twig that I painted white. The stand is a candlestick holder that I painted white and then used a little of the glitter paint to add an accent to the bottom. This would be a cute craft for kids to do if you made some alterations. Friends, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this bonus video. Please let me know which project was your favorite. And if you'd like me to do a midweek video again, let me know what project you'd like me to tackle and I'll do my best. Have a super blessed week and I'll see you soon.